Greetings to each of you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus, the risen Christ. We welcome you to another Bible study. Oh, aren't you glad that we can partake of the Word of God through His Holy Writ? Today we are looking at Genesis chapter 42, verses 6 through 25, as we talk about victorious love. Oh, we are so grateful that we serve a God who does not keep us down but loves us enough to keep on blessing us. We ask now that you continue to pray, that you will continue in your giving. We need your support as we move along. We are going through the 25th week of this pandemic, and God has continued to just bless us. I ask now that you would pray for those who have experienced bereavement in their families. We have those who have recently lost loved ones, and especially uh, brother and sister Kennedy. We ask that you would just pray for them as his brother has transitioned just the other day. So we ask that you will continue to just lift up Pilgrim as we strive to spread the word of God. Come with us now and let us experience, let us study, let us understand what it means to have victorious love. God bless you. Join us. Good evening, my brothers and sisters. We greet you once again in the name of our risen Christ. We are thankful that God has given us another day in which we can study his word and enjoy his creation we are truly thankful for our health as well as our strength and we ask now that you join us in our lesson this evening which is found in genesis 42 verses 6 through 25 and it's entitled victorious love it's a continuation of the journey of that of Jacob and Joshua. Joshua being the son of Jacob that found himself sold as a slave to Egypt, but God has elevated him to higher heights. In our lesson today, amen, victorious love, we will consider the victory that comes out of doing God's will. Here we find that Joseph in this particular uh, uh, chapter and verses uh, has a lot to explain to us about love, about serving God, and about forgiving, doing right towards one another. As we look at our verses this evening, coming out of Genesis 42, 6 through 25, <clears throat> and we will read through them hurriedly, but effectively. And Joseph was the governor over the land, and he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. And Joseph saw his brethren, and he knew them, but made himself strange unto them, and spake roughly unto them. And he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them, and said unto them, Ye are spies, to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. And they said unto him, Nay, my Lord, but to buy food are thy servants come. We are all one man's sons. We are true men. Thy servants are no spies. And he said unto them, Nay, but to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. And they said, Thy servants are twelve brethren, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. 
And behold, the youngest is this day with our father, and one is not. And Joseph said unto them, That is it that I spake unto you, saying, Ye are spies. Hereby ye shall be proved. By the life of Pharaoh ye shall not go forth hence, except your youngest brother come hither. Send one of you, and let him fetch your brother, and ye shall be kept in prison, and your words may be proved, whether there be any truth in you, or else by the life of Pharaoh surely ye are spies. And he put them all together in, into ward three days. And Joseph said unto them the third day, This do, and live, for I fear God. If ye be true men, let one of your brethren be bound in the house of your prison. Go ye, carry corn for the famine of your houses. But bring your youngest brother unto me, so shall your words be verified, and ye shall not die. And they did so. And they said one to another, We are verily guilty concerning our brother, in that we saw the anguish of his soul when he, brought, when he besought us, and we were not here. Therefore, in this distress, come upon us. And Reuben answered them, saying, Spake I not unto you, saying, Do not sin against the child. And ye will not hear me. Therefore, behold, also his blood is required. And they knew not that Joseph understood them, for he spake unto them by an interpreter. And he turned himself about from them and wept and returned to them again and communed with them and took from them Simeon and bound him before their eyes. Then Joseph commanded to fill their sacks with corn and to restore every man's money into his sack, and to give them provisions for the way. And thus did he unto them. This is the word of God. And as we take a moment coming out of this, we see where Jacob, uh, because of the famine, had sent his ten sons, uh, down to Egypt in order to buy corn. Now that they had come, our lesson begins with them coming and giving obedience, amen, and reverence unto that of Joseph, not knowing who Joseph was. And we must remember it had been some time since they ever laid eyes on Joseph. Joseph had now been in Egypt 20 years. 13 years he spent in prison. Seven years now he is reigning as governor, a ruler, a man over all the land under Pharaoh, second in command. God had taken him from a low state, amen, and a meager beginning, and elevated him to one of the prominent leaders of the land. Joseph was able to decipher, amen, and to tell Pharaoh of his dream. And now here he was. Amen. At the age of 30 years old, Joseph now was seeing the dreams that he had dreamed come true. Here it states, amen, amen, that they came and they had to bow before him, not knowing him. Isn't it strange that they could sell off their brother and yet now not recognize who he is. Well, let's go back. 
because Joseph now dwelled among the Egyptians. And when Joseph came out of prison, when he came out of the inner jail, he had shaved, amen, cut off his beard, and he became like them in order that he may not offend Pharaoh. And because of it, God elevated him to a higher position. Here they came and they bowed face down. And remember now Joseph's dream. In his dream earlier, it showed his brethren giving obedience, amen, and giving honor by bowing unto him. And they would not listen. They would not hear it. Matter of fact, the more he expressed the dream to them, the more angrier they became. But now, 20 years later, what Joseph dreamed is now coming true. In verse number 7, it says, And Joseph <clears throat> saw his brethren and knew them, but made himself strange unto them, and spake roughly unto them. Now, because he was now in authority, because... He was second in command of Egypt. He had to humble them. He had to prepare them. Amen. He had to cause them to come into the line of repentance. He spake this way as a man having authority. Even though he knew them as his brethren, he saw them, he knew them, and he knew that one was missing. He spake roughly. And in verse number seven it says, And he said unto them, Which come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. And immediately, verse eight, Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. <clears throat> How is it that something about Joseph should have stood out that they may recognize their own brother. But because he had now been transformed and he looked like an Egyptian more than a Canaanite, he no longer looked like one of the Israelites. Remember now, coming out of verse uh, uh, chapter 41, in verse 42, it says that Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it up on Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestiges of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. Now Joseph was dressed out. Joseph was dressed up, amen, as one of the royal house. He did not look like an Israelite. He did not look like a Canaanite. He did not dress dress like either one. So now, it lets us know that, that because his countenance had changed, because his look had changed, because he did not dress like they dressed, they did not recognize their brother. Here, it lets us know that sometimes transformation Amen. Can take place and we not recognize people we once knew. How often do you travel back? How often do you see others that you grew up with and then you have to look twice and they come up to you and now all of a sudden, amen, they don't recognize you and you don't recognize them. Because it's been so long and a transformation has taken place. Here in the text, it lets us know that Joseph calls them spies. Even though they came, he was now humbling them by calling them spies. You came because of the famine. You came to spy out the nakedness of the land. How barren it is. But Joseph had harvest 
the grain and the corn during the seven years of plenty before the famine ever came. Now he had enough grain that he might be able to spare and to sell. He was overselling the grain out to those who came to buy. But he looks at his brethren and he was hard on them because of what they had done. He remembered how mean they were. He remembered a man how they messed with him all the time. They remember he remembered them putting him in a pit, stripping off his coat and selling him to the Egyptian. Here we are. And Joseph has prevailed. We need to watch how we cast down some folk. And how God is preparing to use them down the road. And remember, all of his dreams were about caring for his family in hard times. But they did not want to hear it. Here we go. As we look at verse number 12, it says, And he said unto them, Nay, but to see the nakedness of the land. Ye are spies. No, we are not spies. We are all one man's son. So here they go. Talking about Jacob, but yet not calling out Jacob, but saying we are men of truth. Well, here we stand, and we see that as the governor, and as he spake roughly unto them, and as they claim to be true men, amen, they, thy servants are no spies. So we look here as they claim their innocence, but we also look at Joseph. Joseph had a love for his brethren. Joseph now was eager and was interested in knowing how his father was, how the rest of his family was, even though he was talking to the ones who had sold him. In verse 13 it says, And they said, Thy servants are twelve brothers. Ooh, here we go. Look at what he says here now. Because one, they are ten. Yeah, had come. Now it says twelve brethren in number thirteen. We are twelve brethren, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with our father, but one is not. Oh, they are confessing now. That the other one, Benjamin, was with their father. And they did not know what had happened to Joseph. Not even knowing that Joseph was right in their face. So here Joseph mind shifts. I want us to look at this. Joseph mind shift, And Joseph said unto them, that is... Is it that I spake unto you, saying, Ye are spies? And he says, Hereby ye shall be proved. By the life of Pharaoh ye shall not go forth hence, except your youngest brother come hither. Now, this sounds like a strange request. But here is the mindset of Joseph. If they sold me, what has happened now to Benjamin. What have they done? Is Benjamin truly with the father? Is Benjamin really okay? Because Joseph loved his brother Benjamin. And Benjamin was had become his father's favorite. Oh, he loved him some Benjamin. And now he says unto them, ye are not going anywhere except your youngest brother come hither. And he said, now send one of you and let him fetch your brother and ye shall be kept in prison. 
and your words may be proved. Whether there be any truth in you or else by the life of Pharaoh, surely ye are spied. So here we now have him speaking to his brother and says, I'm putting you in prison. I'm going to hold you while you send another brother to fetch Benjamin. He didn't call his name, but he said, go get the youngest. Amen. And bring him back. When you bring him back, then I know you are telling the truth. Here we find that there is a conversation going on after that. It makes us remember the things that we have done. And here it says, and Joseph put them all together in to the war. Three days. Now, three days. They were in the war. And I want you to understand something. Joseph, a man, took the anguish and the fear out of them. Because in verse number 18, it says, And Joseph said unto them the third day, This do and live, for I fear God. This statement was a statement that assured them that nothing was going to happen to them. Now we see where Joseph now was having sympathy and humility, amen, on behalf of his brethren. He could have been irate. He could have been angry. He could have been one that had vengeance and have been vindictive. But here he was making sure that they came together and repented of the sin that they had committed. Verse 20 says, bring your youngest brother unto me. So shall your words be verified, and ye shall not die. And this is the and they did so. And they did so. And following verse 20, when they brought Benjamin and he saw Benjamin, it stated that now Joseph, a man, uh, caused them to reflect the guiltiness that was in them. 21, it says, and they said one to another, we are verily guilty concerning our brother. They now look back at what they had done to Joseph. They started to discuss among themselves. He says, in that we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us and we would not hear him. This is one of the reasons God allowed Joseph to express the dreams to his brethren. He wanted them to know that God was dealing with him. And when he expressed the dream to, 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 to Jacob, Jacob, a man, understood that God was dealing with Joseph. Here his brethren now find themselves in distress. It says that, that, that when he besought us, uh, we would not hear him. Therefore, is this distress come upon us? This anguish had come upon us. Confession of sin now is coming out of them. Amen. The guilty consciences has now arisen within them. They remember. And in 22, Reuben speaks up. And Reuben said unto them, <coughs> Spake I not unto you, saying, Do not sin against the child, and ye would not hear me. They had so much anger because Joseph was favored by his father. Joseph was loved. Remember, Joseph was one that had the coat of many colors and and, and because of it now, they said, and his blood is now required at our hand. And they knew not that Joseph understood them. Now, isn't it strange? Joseph was wise enough to have interpreters speaking their language. 
So that means that they had another language. And Joseph understood it. But he had an interpreter speaking on his behalf. And as they spoke, amen, we find that now they have re repented of the sin. And sin's misery is causing them now to be in distress as to what has come of Joseph. Oh, I like this when it says, and he had an interpreter. And the interpreter was speaking on his behalf. Brothers and sisters, all of this puts us in mind of Jesus himself. And as we look at our lesson, it says in 24, as I hasten on, it says, and he turned himself about from them and wept. Oh, my brothers and sisters, isn't it something when the Lord pities our sins? When the Lord wept, amen, over Jerusalem. When Jesus himself looked and saw the condition and yet even the Messiah well, he looked at them and out of love, out of concern, out of pity, he wept and turned again and look at this, commune with them. Now he started to commune with his brethren and took from them Simeon and bound him before their eyes. Oh, I want us to catch a glimpse of this because, amen, here we look at what he is doing in humbling them and preparing them to be blessed. He has now caused them to confess. He has now caused them to be truthful. He has now seen his brother Benjamin and they still don't know is Joseph. Victorious love means it's coming out of this lesson because Joseph was victorious. What they meant for evil, God meant it for good. When they sold him, hoping that he, they, that he would perish, hoping that they would get rid of him, God had another assignment for Joseph. The victory that came out of Joseph's, amen, experience was the fact that he was able now to help his own family and others during the time of the famine. It was this love. Joseph had to weep. Joseph had to wrestle within himself. Did he get angry? I believe he did. But God was working with Joseph. And here it says that after he wept, after he turned away from them, he had to go and seek the Lord for himself and come again. He came to commune with them. And look at what he took Simeon and bound him for before their eyes. But I like what he did in 25. In verse 25 as we prepare to close. Joseph commanded to fill their sacks with corn. Oh, he is doing good for the evil that they done to him. How often does God do good to all of those who do evil to him? Oh, what if God would hold our sins over us if it had not been for the Lord on our side? Tell me where would we be? And look at this now. He takes the sacks of corn and he fills it for his brethren. And look at what he does. The money that he gave for the corn, he said, now put it back in the sack of corn and put it up top so when they open it, they will see that the money was there. Oh, he blesses them by not even charging them for the corn and, and the Lord good unto us. This is called 
favor. And here Joseph is showing favor to his brethren. Joseph was not being revengeful. Joseph was not being angry. Joseph was returning good for the evil that they had done. And it says, restore, restore, restore to every man money into his sack. Restore a man and to restore every man's money into his sack. I want you to look at how God restores unto us, how God preserves us, how God blesses us. Do we deserve it? No, they didn't deserve it for what they did, but because of the love that Jacob, I mean Joseph had for his brethren, he blesses them because of his relationship. Oh, we got to have a relationship with God. And God has to have a relationship with you and I. And when we are in relationship, even though we stumble sometimes, even though we come up short, God blesses us tremendously. Here, he not only fills their sacks with the corn, but he restores their money. And to give them provisions for the weight. Now, first of all, he unfilled their sacks so, so they don't have to go in the sacks because he's giving them provision so that they can eat while they are traveling back home. Oh, what a mighty love. The agape love that God would have us to sow between one another. That's why Anger, that's why hatred is a cancer. Hatred will mess up some things. But if we got somebody that is showing the love of God towards those who thought that they would never be loved, they still don't know that this is their brother. And but his, their brother was the one they bowed to. The brother was the one they came to. And the brother was the one that provided for them the very one they said wouldn't do it the very one they said would never do it is the one that gave them provisions brothers and sisters the victorious love is doing good over evil even though we have those who may do us wrong Love them anyhow. Those who may not treat us right, love them anyhow. Because the Bible teaches us, amen, to love those who spitefully use you and do all manner of evil against you. He says, if they smite you on one cheek, he said, turn the other. But he also teaches us that if God can forgive us, we ought to be able to forgive one another. Oh, what if God would hold your sins over you? What if you did not know Jesus? Who would be an epitome of Joseph now? Joseph now had raised up. Je Jesus came out of humble beginnings. Jesus, a man, grew up as a young man. And Jesus was at the age of 30 when he became rabbi, when he started his ministry. And isn't it strange that Joseph was at the age of 30 when he was now placed over all Egypt? Brothers and sisters, what a God we serve. Take note from this. Victory comes out of love. It's easy to hate. It's easy to destroy. It's easy to tear down. But it takes work to build up. So I just want somebody to understand. God is not looking at all that you have done. God is looking at what you are doing now. And as Joseph allowed his brethren to repent, confess, look at what they had done, the misery of what they had done, knowing that now this is falling up on them, 
Joseph forgives them. Joseph provides for them. And Joseph makes a way for them. Aren't you glad that God is on our side? Jesus came in a humble manner. But oh, he rose, amen, to higher heights. And because of his death, because of his burial, and because of his resurrection, and because of the shedding of his blood, we now have a relationship with God through the Son. And Joseph, even though his father was known as a trickster, Jacob was something else, but Joseph, amen, was still in the hands of God, provided for his family. <clears throat> Not only his family, but all of those who came to buy. And it says, thus he did unto them. So victorious love comes out of a love that can only come from God, that gives you the satisfaction from doing the right thing. And let us understand that it is easier to forgive than to hold on to hatred. Victorious love. Jesus loved humanity so that the cross was victory for him. The grave was victory for him. His resurrection was victory for him. And all of it was victory for you and I. If there's someone here this evening who may not know the Lord as your personal Savior, I ask that you give it some consideration. And if you desire to be saved, to be renewed, to be transformed, just repeat these words after me. Father, I come before you now. As a sinner, I know I have done wrong in your sight, but I ask you now to come into my life. I believe that Jesus is your son. I believe he died for my sins. I believe that he was buried, and I believe on the third day he rose again, having all power in his hand. I ask you now to come in. Mold me, shape me, and change me is my request unto you. In the name of Jesus, the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we thank you for just being God's child now. If you repeat these words, the Bible says you are now a child of the king, you are now in the hands of Almighty God. Study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. And we ask that you would just pray and continue to ask God to lead God and direct you in every way. Pilgrim, we love you. We ask that you will continue to pray, continue your giving, continue to aid and support this ministry of the church during the time of the pandemic. And God will truly continue to bless each and every one of you along the way. And just remember, Pastor Rector loves you, and there's nothing you can do about it. Have a very blessed day.